Nobody actually read Chainsaw Man. Okay, I'm being dramatic. Did anyone actually read Chainsaw Man? So, I've made a nice handful of videos on Chainsaw Man now, and my most recent video on Yoshida sprung a bunch of comments that kind of just made me realize how many misconceptions there are in the Chainsaw Man fanbase. Because I'm tired of typing out long responses to people, I want to clear up what I think are some of the biggest things that have gone over a lot of Chainsaw Man readers' heads, at least that I've seen in my own comments. This isn't spite. I just don't have time to respond to the same thing a hundred thousand times, so I really want everyone to see this as a public service. And also, don't feel bad if you happen to misunderstand anything either. Chainsaw Man is a deceptively complex story, often playing with its own narrative and narrative tropes, building on things outside of its source material for foundations and intentionally subverting some of those expectations. So no one should feel bad if they missed out or were confused by something, especially when half of us read it in like one eight hour setting. All right, let's go. I made a comment very briefly about how we don't have confirmation that Denji knows the true nature of Chainsaw Man's power. That as of chapter 118, it is left unspoken and implied to be unknown by Denji, with Yoshida presenting the idea of Chainsaw Man eating death and Denji acting confused in response. I had a lot of people who stated that this wasn't true because Chainsaw Man eats Makima in part one. So let's explain in detail what is being misunderstood here. In Makima's encounter with Kishibe, she lets the cat out of the bag to Kishibe alone that the true power of Chainsaw Man is to eat devils out of existence. This is the stated goal of Makima, what makes her a fan, and also the goal of Yoshida in part two as well as Santa Claus and so many other devils. It's the reason they target Denji, try to get him on their side, or try to control him. Makima proves this power to the reader by mentioning horrors of our own world that are commonly known, but that Kishibe, the aged, wise, and knowledgeable guy, has never heard of. He even says it's hard for him to wrap his brain around. Secondly, it's implied that Kishibe has not told Denji of this power that Makima told him because they both explicitly state at the end that the idea to eat Makima was something that Denji came up with. Kishibe even being surprised at the solution that he came up with. Some other people also stated that of course Denji knows, not only because he ate her, but also that he came up with it. But there is an extremely big difference here that's being avoided. Obviously, Denji didn't do what Makima said the power would do, because control is reborn into the human world, as the control devil wholesale. Makima died. Presumably, control was sent back to hell, and then control was destroyed there and brought back to Earth. Makima's power is supposed to remove concepts from existence. The devils no longer exist anymore. At all. That obviously didn't happen because Nayuta wouldn't exist. So did something go wrong? Well, no, actually. And I actually think it's a really poetic act of writing and irony as well, which is something I think is important to point out that I'm sure even if you did catch this difference, you'll find cathartic. In the scene with Kishibe, Makima mentions how she's a fan of Chainsaw Man, how she wants to beat him so that she can earn the right to control him, but that if she lost and was eaten out of existence by Chainsaw Man, it would still be the ultimate honor. In the Nayuta chapter, Kishibe asks how Denji won against Makima, and we get confirmation on the logic of how Denji snuck up on Makima, that it was because Makima was so enthralled with Chainsaw Man's essence that she never actually noticed Denji the person. Denji the human being. Denji being able to beat Makima because she didn't see him as a person, but for the power in the Chainsaw Man's heart. And so her ultimate honor of being eaten by Chainsaw Man didn't happen, because Chainsaw Man didn't eat her. Denji did. Denji the human, the person, ate the physical body of Makima to keep it from reviving. It split it into so many pieces and slowly digested it into something that could never reform as Makima the human, essentially finding a loophole in her contract and forcing the devil of control back into hell. Kishibe explicitly states as much. Nayuta is the new control devil. 
She still exists because Denji didn't eat control in battle as the transformed Chainsaw Man, but he did so as the human eating meals over a long span of time. I hope that makes things more clear. I can understand that people just hear, yeah, when Chainsaw Man eats devils, the devils disappear, and Denji is Chainsaw Man, so whenever he eats them, that happens too, but that is avoiding the entire point of Denji's explanation for what Makima lost, and why. Denji is his own person. He's not just Chainsaw Man. He's Denji the human with the heart of the Chainsaw Devil. Pochita literally lives in his heart and is a separate being from Denji, a being that sometimes makes contact with him through his dreams and through his thoughts. He lends the power to Denji. He recovers and revives Denji, but fundamentally Denji is his own person. So no, since Kishibe didn't tell Denji about Chainsaw Man's true power, and Denji did not use that power at the end of part one, when Yoshida asks Denji if he could eat death, Denji is likely totally lost on its true meaning. There are a number of reasons that we could speculate on why Yoshida asks it, of course, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments as well, and I respond to tons of them. But as for common misconception, and what I've seen some people consider a plot hole, I hope it's totally straightened out now. Especially since I think this is actually a very intentionally poetic moment. Makima getting something that she would have considered an honor in a way that she wouldn't consider an honor, due to her own mistake of failing to see Denji as a human being. It's a bit of dramatic irony that's so sweet and cathartic and satisfying, but also extremely crucial to the world building and lore. The second misconception is something involving Yoshida's name, which I feel I didn't explain well in my last video, so that's kind of on me. I mentioned a large part of the one theory about Yoshida being death that I don't buy is that his name essentially is Yo, Shi Da. Yo meaning like, hello, hey, whatever, and Shi being derived from Shine, or die, slash death, and Da being a common grammar for I am. I kind of just stated it dismissively, like, oh, his name means I am death, teehee. But uh, now I'm going to explain why this is actually a really silly point and not as convincing as many English readers think. Mainly, you know, you know Yoshi? The Mario character? Yoshi was famously named that as somewhat of a joke because of how common it is. Yoshi means good luck and is essentially the Japanese version of the English name Bob or Joe a name people associate with being generic. So Yoshida, Yoshida, is not as exceptional as you would think. In fact, the name Yoshida is actually ranked as a surname 11 out of 10,000 entries as the most popular Japanese surname. Almost top 10 out of 10,000. And the final nail in the coffin, his name isn't even spelt Yoshida, it's spelt Yoshida with the kanji again for good luck and rice field, meaning unlike if his name was used with katagana or hiragana, the intended interpretation is already given to the reader. This isn't a super common theory I've seen on the Japanese side of the internet, and this is partially why I think that is. Someone learned basic Japanese grammar and people took it very seriously. So no, Yoshida doesn't mean, hey, I'm death although it could with hiragana or different grammar. In Yoshida Hirofumi's case, it means lucky field or lucky rice. I felt the need to elaborate on this since some people in the comments actually found the Yoshida stuff I put in my video fairly compelling, and I realize now that I should have probably put some more time into explaining why it is weak speculation at best and light-hearted conspiracy brain at worst. I'm not saying he isn't the death devil, I, I don't know, but at this point it's extremely unlikely, and any evidence of so seems pretty shaky. Just seems to be a theory based on vibes at the moment, if I'm honest. But if you'd like to hear my take on who Yoshida is in the story, a theory with a little bit more substantiation in my opinion, uh, feel free to check that video out, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Let's finally do a cover on the central metaphysics of Chainsaw Man, which I have seen from time to time catch a lot of people off guard in how they operate and unfortunately help perpetuate the idea that Chainsaw Man is illogical in some way, despite the series doing perfectly well at sticking to its own world's rules. This is essentially how it works. 
All of humanity have fears from person to person. The collective subconscious of these fears of all the people are stored in a realm called hell, where devils are born into being. The existence and power of such devils are dependent on the amount of people fearful of a concept and to the extremity in which they are fearful. The power of a devil also correlates with its intelligence alongside its strength. The more feared something is, the more likely something is to be intelligent, which is why more lowly fears like the tomato devil are more bestial, and more powerful fears like control have been shown capable of presenting fairly indistinguishably from humans. Devils, as beings contingent of the human subconscious, don't disappear when they are killed, but rather enter into another realm with their memories made fresh, completely erased, blank slate. When a devil is killed by another devil in the realm of the subconscious, aka hell, then they are brought into earth. And when they are killed on earth, they are reborn into hell and repeated ad infinitum. The fear of the public can drastically change power of already existing devils. And the one monkey wrench in this whole situation is Chainsaw Man specifically has the possibility to remove devils, not from one realm to another, but from the subconscious of humanity entirely. Essentially, wiping the concept from reality. Some devils exist as extensions of concepts that are important to the fabric of reality. These devils are the strongest things in categories that would fundamentally change how the world operates in unforeseen ways. Like one of the strongest devils we've seen, darkness. Without darkness, how would light operate? Darkness permeates every aspect of reality, even in subtle ways. Devils can also take over bodies and create fiends, or make contract with hunters to use their power for a price. But I haven't seen too many people misunderstand that part of how it works. Anywho, this was my public service announcement. Oh, I'm, I'm such a charitable, charitable young boy. Uh, I hope that I cleared something up for you, or if I didn't, I hope you can use this video to help clarify some common misconceptions or misunderstandings. I really enjoy making Chainsaw Man content, and I really hope you can continue watching so with your likes and comments and support and all that. Please support me on Patreon or Twitch, or follow my Twitter. Till next time, see you soon.